<laughs> yeah, see, so you can, if you want to have a little privacy, well, you can do that. And I can just do blinking, that. Now it's blinking. Yeah, when it's blinking, that means that mic is dead. <laughs> So you're well, I didn't know that. I didn't know I could shut you guys in water off. Oh. <laughs> I don't think we want you to. No, no, no. That, That's what we were talking about on the way. We were saying how you were teaching, you were going to show us how we're all so programmed. And so we go, yeah, we're like computers, so too bad we don't have an escape key or control, <laughs> alternate, delete. <laughs> But you don't know, you don't know do computers anything. yet. Well, that's right. He's, well, before, we, before we do anything, I'll else. pause this off. Well, then I'll get the introduction right? and stuff. Yeah, get your, get your mic on. Oh, yeah. That'll okay. stop. Yeah, there, there we go. go. Oh, there you thank you. Yeah, yeah. Right. Are you all focused in then? You bet. Okay. <clears throat> My name is Roger Elbig, and today is... The 5th. The 5th of... Uh, January. January 2001. You bet. Brand new year, huh? Okay. New millennium. New millennium. That's right. Just new millennium, it. yeah. Well, then that probably means here that we have a reversal of the poles, repolarizing here the energy that we're dealing with. So maybe that's the reason for the uh, Greenspan here moving so fast here to re reduce the interest rates. Yeah, it's a big, half a percent is a big move in the I have an idea that it's not going to work for those brokers here like they think it is this time. I think you're right. <clears throat> and doing what we're doing. You see, if these brokers don't cooperate with us, we don't need them. They can go peddle their papers here elsewhere. So the, uh, <coughs> they've probably uh, ignored enough of us now, you see, and now with the reversal on there, why uh, they can start <coughs> seeing their assets shrink here like they shrunk ours here for the last millennium. And I just wanted that on this tape here because I want to let them know here what I think of them. <laughs> okay. The one thing I was going to introduce to you, uh, Donna, <coughs> Donna, of course, had, had a look at it on the way down here, but it's called Access to Energy. And it has to do with the, the uh, effects of public education, and this guy is laying out the remedy on it. Now, let me read some of the rest of this into the, into the tape here. Uh, it's a pro-science, pro-technology, pro-free enterprise monthly newsletter. P.O. Box 1250, Cave Junction, Oregon. The zip is 97523. And I guess it says it's a copyright year, 2000 by Access to Energy. And, uh, and of course, this volume here, it's just <coughs> open, opens the subject of <coughs> teaching students to think. And it's too much to get into right here, but at least you know where you can get it. And uh, I got this from my dentist. I had my uh, teeth fixed the other day the other day here, and I have no idea here what these root canals get into now, but uh, <clears throat> when I went to settle up with him, I asked him here how, uh, how we're going to uh, pay for this stuff. Well, he says here we have an equal exchange, you and I, here. You do, you've done things for me here, and now we're getting an equal exchange. And I, so I asked him, I said, well, how do you carry it on your books? And he says, there isn't any. But you see what he actually does. The information he gets from me or from others, <clears throat> he would take payment up from a credit card, for instance. Okay, but those of us here that know how to discharge a credit card, we're making payment in fact. <clears throat> if you come in with cash and you try to pay it here, that is not payment because the debt still exists. You can't pay with the debt. So you see what he's doing with me <clears throat> is essentially the same thing here, what they call pro bono. And of course he's giving me the uh, benefits of industry or the industrial technology here as a, in an equal exchange here for something here that he gets from me about it. But in this case he's not carrying it on his books. And maybe that is 
something for us to keep in mind that every day as a family, this is what we do as a family, we don't uh, uh, exchange in the family and write each other checks back and forth and things like that. So that's where probably most of the uh, of the uh, the uh, commerce is carried on here is, is uh, between family members. I have a question if it's not improper. Uh, Bring the question. Yeah. If you did pay that with the credit card, then the credit card company would discharge that obligation. But if you didn't, then that didn't happen. But let me continue because if you did, and he did get that discharge with, through the credit card company, how is it then that he's able to use that in his tax liability situation? Well, I don't know here whether the question, uh, you know, sometimes your question like that limits the, the answer. Okay. And so I'm just going <clears> to <throat> state what I think about a situation like that, that the him receiving the credit from me now means he's got a requisition to go into the public for whatever it costs here, uh, him to operate his business. The, uh, the credit card company really isn't doing anything except serving as a witness between myself and the vendor. And the vendor has <coughs> also has got to subscribe to the credit. Otherwise, here he would not take my credit card. Okay. So that means that all these parties are contracted together and when, when the vendor has subscribed here to the credit card to take the same card that I've got, that is locking in the, uh, the vendor and I to a completion of a contract. And of course the uh, credit card company is just the ones that's uh, that's keeping track of that and usually you're going to run into problem with a credit card company is when they think here that you're using a cash item you see and so what you want to do when you're dealing with credit cards make sure that you keep your <coughs> your uh, receipts because the receipts are the uh, the evidence that you received something in fact from an eligible vendor because and you might also have to identify the items that you get because you might find some rogue vendors here that are going to give you cash and that's the equivalent here of being in the drug business I know lots of people here that landed in prison here doing stuff like that when they weren't actually dealing in drugs here but they were busted for it why? Because when you're dealing in cash, that's the headless horseman. You cannot identify who the principal is. And isn't that what they did with John the Baptist when they beheaded him? Now they trade his body around back and forth here and uh, there's no identity. It's a bearer bond. It's the equivalent of creating currency for the public. You know, your Federal Reserve notes. Those are bearer bonds. I mean, those aren't the only kind of a bearer bond. The corporations can create all kinds of uh, uh, commercial paper that, <clears throat> that has value recognized by other factions in our commerce that uh, consider that to be a bearer bond. Okay? So, with that, I don't know how, how many of these explanations here we need to be putting on here just for the sake of putting them on but but uh, maybe we need to get into the questions of some of these real things that you had on your mind here before we uh, we got the tape rolling yeah so we go through that again yeah why, why don't you go through it again here because that should have been put on the tape okay well uh, this is rotten Ron speaking but anyway uh, I had applied for a credit card in my wife's name because I still haven't been able to get one in my own name. And because uh, as Roger knows, I've been out of the credit system or <coughs> for 27 years now and so I'm just relearning to write a check. But uh, 
I purchased some items on her card that uh, she passed away in, in uh, July of uh, 99, and I got the credit card in her name in November of uh, 2000. I put a couple of hundred dollar item on that uh, card and got the bill from the fellow that sold me the product. And when we got the bill from the credit card company, we did the thing. I think it was accepted for value. I'm not sure. What do you think? You did, probably. And we put, sent the draft in to take care of the whole bill. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> they've never responded to that, and that's been some time now. It's been over a month since we did that. In the meantime, I got another uh, from the credit department that this uh, account is delinquent or whatever, whatever that stuff is all about. And then I've got another bill that came in, and of course the figure is bigger. And uh, so I. I didn't know whether the card was still good because I thought maybe they'd be shutting it off. But when we got here to the, mo I called up the motel here last night, and they said, "Well, we need a credit card." I said, "Well, all I have is my wife, so I give them the number. They give me a clearance on it, and we come up here." And she said, "How are you going to pay?" And I said, "Here, use the card." So the card took care of it. Mm -hmm. So the the question is now is uh, now that I've got these other items in and they're new. Offers, right? They're new offers, yeah. And uh, the fact that they're ignoring the first site draft or documentary draft. That's the evidence here that it has zeroed the account. Ah, uh, that's probably why the card is still good here. Sure, because when they when they ignore it here, that's them in the negative telling you here the balance is zero. You see? Okay. Well, and they don't necessarily want us to know that. No, they don't want you to know that. <laughs> what happens when they send everything back to you? Same thing. There can, there can be a lot of things here. It's not just sending it back. It's, it's exactly here what, what's going on here in the account. But you see, a lot of times here, they, when they're coming with conduct like that and saying, this is, has no value, that's exactly what he should say because that's the information that you want to go to the collector because the collector is not collecting money because there isn't any money. The collector is collecting information so that they can identify the two parties that agree that there isn't any. Okay? So now most of the question is when they turn it over for collection well, you ought to be jumping for joy. It's about time. Mm -hmm. And so, when you get some of these concepts down, see, then we can get away. We don't have to carry on these meetings and, and workshops for two and three days. Here, we can get done with some of these things here in a very short time. And then you see, you got the rest of the way home, and you got lots less stuff to digest, and then you can focus on the on the real problem here. We, it doesn't take forever. So, and you don't have to wear yourself out and abuse yourself here in the meantime here to, to uh, spend all that time. Well, on this subject matter then, if they do send back, uh, this has happened to several of the people around us, that they send back the draft and all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. Uh, is, is that time for a letter to go in of instruction of some sort? Well, you see, it depends. You see, if if you've used a credit card, you already have this settlement because you've already got the goods and services, you see. And if, they, uh, if they're sending you a, a bill and they're trying to dun you for uh, goods and services, uh, chances are you don't even have to uh, answer it because they're admitting here that the account is zero. Now the key, the key to this thing is to how they are using the position of, of prepayment, you see. Um, because what they're trained to do is pick a position to try and get you to testify in some manner or they want to see, even if you're putting it in writing, to see if you're predisposed to testify against yourself or to give them information and to constantly give them information every time they ask you a question 
Then you see, if you're too prone to do that, chances are they're going to engineer a court appearance. So you see, the, uh, the best way, I guess, is to just, like you did, just take your card out and use it. And then, if, what they do, sometimes they, they have a way here of tipping off the uh, vendor to make the claim on you and say, here, well, we can't take your card. Oh, you can't take it? Well, see, they're making a claim when they do that. And uh, my, the question in my mind is, is do you have an exemption or do you have a deduction to make that claim? Because what they're doing, I've seen where the card companies, and these are really not card companies. A lot of times there's an attorney in between that intercepts here the correspondence and he jumps on the case here and he's, he's uh, in disguise representing himself as the company here when it's just an attorney. <coughs> that's taken some Viagra. <laughs> he's, gotten, he's gotten taller. He's looking for someone to uh, yeah. screw. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. And so, the, uh, so it's not, you're not really talking to the, to the card company. You're talking to an attorney who's taken the account in bar. Now he's stealing the account because that is the money, in fact, you see, that uh, that there isn't any money, but he's he's selling it here on the black market here as if the, if it is. Yeah. He's in the, <clears throat> that's the equivalent to the emergency war powers. They're going internal, or you're going into the emergency room. Does the attorney, when he takes on that position, stepping between you and that uh, credit card company or whatever, is he acting privately in that capacity? When he's sure, he is. He has to act in his own name. That's why we. Uh, uh, make him, from then on, he's our baby. Sure, he's the one now that is holding the bond. He's holding the, uh, the value of the contract, see, and he's the one here that has the obligation to see to it that the uh, trustee in bankruptcy discharges his duties because he, he's holding the charge. See, there can't be a discharge <coughs> until there's a charge. So he's holding the charge, and uh, so there, we can go after him and hold him accountable for it because a lot of the uh, people he represents here, these are people who don't know any better. They're the privates out in the front line that the enemy is shooting at. Yeah, and they're all cannon fodder here as far as those attorneys are concerned because they're British agents. Esquire? British authorization. That's British. They're the ones that are financing here uh, uh, Greater Fresno or Greater Sacramento. The great bond of Great Britain here, it's all insurance money, and that money is not eligible to be used for original issue. It can only be used to fix something. And that means to fix something that was in prior existence. And that something must be personal property because they have to identify the principle that had the prior existence, and that's where the word priority comes from, from prior. So, the uh, prior existence is what? The promise of the Messiah or the promise of redemption. And so you see, it's those people, the person who subscribes to that truth that has described the personal property that needs to be fixed. Now you see that attorney here is obligated to provide uh, uh, the redemption, and they're not. These are the these are the ones there that the New Testament is talking about that uh, say that we can't do business on the Sabbath day. But the Sabbath day, which I'm sure they aren't going to like me here uh, pointing out what is the Sabbath day here, which is the the night time where they get their uh, overnight loans which means the Jewish day starts after 6 o'clock in, in the evening. And that's every day. And that's why they're called children of darkness. Yeah, the children of darkness, yeah. And the word Jew just simply means he who is 
operating his commerce by execution of law. In other words, who depends on an, on an executive officer. But the executive officers, they claim an interest in you. They're claiming here that they are holding in common with, with you the stock here of the, of the uh, body of government. They claim to hold an interest here, and that's a common law. But doesn't the New Testament here tell us here there's no, no such thing, or nothing common or unclean? It's all holy? Acts chapter 10. Yeah. Okay, so the, uh, the, there's the, uh, the working mechanism here as to how we get at these uh, characters. Because you, you bind them in their conscience, and when they violate their we then set it up here so that they can violate their conscience. This is how they've set all of us up before. But now we're going to invite them to do it. And when they violate their conscience here, their immune system goes down. And now you see they have contracted for disease, commercial disease. <coughs> and all they have to do is walk into the doctor here and he'll put the manual out here and ask him here, what kind of a disease did you contract for? Here, and I'll look it up in the book. Uh, that's right. Mm -hmm. So, the, uh, that's true. and you see, that's the, the, uh, the, well, the ancient Egyptians in our modern day is, uh, is the industrial community. Because when the Christ was born there on that, uh, in that stable, and Joseph was uh, uh, told in a dream to take the child into, into Egypt. Mm -hmm. He was told to take the child into, into uh, uh, industry. Why? Because they had made a reservation at a motel or a hotel. And, they were, and it wasn't until the three wise men came in and paid the bill or deposited the gold, frankincense, and myrrh that uh, the uh, reservation now here, the room was open and they could take the child into commerce or, or the new issue. And where did the new issue came from? It came from the east side of the decimal point. At night, by the way. They followed the marshal by night, the marshal star, uh -huh. the star by night. And, they, and it was the uh, three wise men here or the three zeros here after the decimal point. We're into the third dimension, you see, because <clears throat> the third dimension here is like an ionized account or a charged account. Ionization. Zion, and then we go to Sion. In other words, the redemption and the twinkling of an eye. You close the account and you open it again, but it's still the same account, same number. The only difference is you're going from the old covenant contract to the new covenant contract from execution of law to grace. To or grace, yeah. Law. Or operation. Right. Or public policy. Right. Same thing. See, policy or insurance money here that can't be used for original issue can only be used to fix the, uh, the uh, new issue. And a new issue here was a new child or a new uh, contract. And that's what they did here when they... You paid off one, they came back, and they made the second one look just like the first one, and you thought it was, they were refu re refusing the first one. When in fact here that they, <clears throat> they just gave you a double dose and maybe a triple dose sometimes. It's a new contract, and, and they're just, it's just multiplying the amount of money you're dealing with. Well, I also am of the opinion that they're into my account, or her account, either way you want to look at it, because that is my property that I'm using. And uh, so they're going to continue to use the account, no matter what kind of paperwork we throw back and forth at each other. Well, yeah, but see, we don't care here what the public does. That's none of our business until we're engaged here in, a, in an agreement on something specific. So those names, <clears throat> your name, they create a, a voodoo doll is what it is here with your name on it here and it lives and breathes according to them here, just like you do, see? So close here so that nobody knows the difference. But when they charge that voodoo doll, 
and and uh, <clears throat> the marshal or the or the peace officer comes looking for that voodoo doll, and you got the same name. They grab you, and now it's all reduced to <clears throat> a uh, an identity, mm -hmm. an identity hearing. So you get to the identity hearing, and they ask you, well, what is your name? You see, you if you tell them you're a witness against yourself. So you've got to call a witness. So you see, if you have the judge in there, he's got the charges in his hand, and you, then you just ask him, well, do you have the charging instrument in front of you, or what are the charges? I wouldn't ask him what the charges are. I would just ask him here, do you have the charging instrument? And he's going to hold you in contempt here if you don't give your name. So you just ask him here, well, if you have it, and he says he has it, then you ask him here, what does it say? You see, you got to make him the eyewitness. Because the first four numbers, well, let me put it to you this way. A municipality has a zip code. It has five numbers on a zip code. Yeah. Well, when you take a look at the courthouse here, like uh, Los Angeles downtown uh, Superior Court, right. I think it is, the yeah. Superior Courthouse, it's got <clears throat> in stone a lady out there holding the balances, okay. and she has a blindfold on. Okay? Well, the blindfold covers her eyes. Okay. Well, when we're dealing with commercial invoices, a commercial invoice has four numbers assigned. If you go to the, the uh, county treasurer, mm -hmm. the county treasurer will be holding parcels of property under four-digit numbers. Those are the invoice numbers here of each parcel that they have in there that they are taxing and billing for taxes. Okay? Now, the fifth number identifies a municipality. So you see, those all represent the five senses. Those five numbers. Okay? So, with the four senses, Documented now, the blindfold is on the lady here, which is the uh, commercial uh, or the ladies in waiting here that are bound to the uh, to the king, mm -hmm. which are the agencies, internal revenue. It's the internal body, and uh, <clears throat> the the uh, people who administer this body here are blind. The ladies in waiting are blind. Comment. Comment? It would seem that they have the blindfold on telling you that they're going to operate on you auditorily. Yeah. They yes. See yeah. what, you, what you say out of your mouth. Right. Yeah, auditorily. But you see also the revelation in, in Revelation it states here that the millstone is cast into the sea never to be heard again. So you see the mill levy cannot be uh, the uh, tax uh, on the mill cannot be uh, taxed orally hmm. because it, it can't be heard again here because when it's cast into the sea, it's cast into the public domain. It's not private. So you see, they have to now have a, have a public uh, display here before they can bring the mill levy up again. That's why <coughs> the... Uh, Assessors, the county assessors and township assessors would have to turn the claim over to the county auditor and then it would have to be a public meeting to where you can go in and dispute it. But that public meeting now means that the, the township has committed the tax assessment on the mill levy to the county and now the county here multiplies it by 10 for their bond here to pay their people and then the state multiplies it by a hundred and of course the uh, the uh, Capitol Hill will multiply by a million. They, uh, they got six zeros on it by the time it gets to Capitol Hill.
So it, there, there is a description of Israel. Israel here is deployed here in tens, hundreds, and thousands. One zero, two zeros, and three. And it doesn't mean just one and then add in one zero. I mean you're adding two and then three, and by that time you've got six. Because you started out with one to start with. So there's where you got your one million dollars. And your one million dollars here is what's the base of an insurance binder on the insurance agency or agent. One million dollars on a, as an individual. If you go over an individual, see, then you're going to have to jump through some zoning requirements and the like. See, and going to require impact statements in the local community and all kinds of stuff if you got that much money now circulating in the local communities. And that's <clears throat> because the Corps of Engineers has to take notice of it so that they can assign the strategic materials here that it represents. Priorities. And so that there is the priority processing uh, procedure. But the Corps of Engineers is the one here that issues the permits. Okay, Army, Corps of Engineers, post in the account, Army post, Army post office, Army Corps of Engineers, it's all and you see the uh, municipalities here are where all of the money is issued here when the contracts go. So it's contract law. It's not, it's not expansion, it's contraction. Okay? So when you get this figured out in physics, you know, you can follow it in physics here on whatever terms they're using. Is it expanding or is it contracting? Okay, now we brought up something else here was talked about earlier today. After you people got here, by the way, so I'm, I, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I was going to wait for an opportunity to bring it in, but as long as I'm thinking about it, so we don't forget it. You see, we're talking about the Sadducees and, and the Pharisees, okay? That's the vertical integration. There is no time or interest and in that. It's all principle. Why? Because the... <clears throat> the Pharisees are the upper house and the Sadducees were the lower house. So it's vertical. It's not horizontal. And you see when the, when the, uh, the wise men came from the east, you see that's horizontal. It's talking about time. But it, I'm not sure if it's talking about time in reverse or not because uh, when they come from the east, moving to the west, And when they made the deposits of the gold, frankincense, and myrrh, then they had to return home. But the but Herod was looking for them, and he's the executioner. And they, refusing to accept an execution here, they had to return home by a different way than they came, and they came here through the uh, through the night. I need to pause you just one minute. Okay. Power here. Oh, did I take your power? No, your mm. camera's still running. Do we have to start over? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That was, was when Greg gets his uh, transferred over to. Uh... Well, just pick up the beginning. It keeps you, it keeps you crash roots. Oh, sorry, Robbie. That's okay. Okay, we just take off again. Where were we? Okay. The <laughs> <laughs> Pharisees and the vertical. Oh. You, you were talking about the, the wise men, as to why the wise men, um, you said that they came in at night. And you were explaining why when they came in from the east, they came in at night and they went home another way. But they talking went, about but when, time. But they, when they went home, it was at night, too. That's where you were at. You didn't say that part, did you? No. Well, when they went home, they could not go back the way they came. So they had to, they had to leave by a different way, which was probably during the day or probably... Uh, <clears throat> But they had to go through the promised land, or the promissory note, or the promise to pay. 
you see. But you see, they could not go in a way that Herod could catch up with them or some executive officer, right. some executioner. So they had to go by way of, of agreement, which would have been the promissory note because the Jewish Passover is just an exchange here from the future to the past and the past to the future. In other words, your, your, your treasury bill is exchanged for a treasury bond making the bill a future event or a future contract. Okay. But you see, both of them cross over or pass over the promise, the promise to pay, which is the, the lentil of the door, you see. The Passover, yeah. yeah, and if you take a look at your Social Security card, on each side of the Social Security card you've got a Greek order, <laughs> yeah, and on top of the Greek order there is a capital, and then, of course, the uh, lentil rests upon the uh, on the capital. <clears throat> and so you see the uh, the the Passover going up over the top and not going through. But see now, guess what? In between those Greek orders, if you get a new Social Security card. That's what it says. This card has been established for this person, and then your name is in there. Or it's probably what they consider the name of the straw man. Mm -hmm. But I say, well, so what? That's my business name that I do business in. So you see, it belongs to me. It doesn't belong to somebody else. That's my personal property. And that's the business name I do business in. And when I fill out an application for a credit card, for instance, they ask me, well, who is your employer? And I write, Roger N. Elvick, in all capital letters, is my employer. <laughs> Where does he live? He lives at the same address here as that I live at. And I just write it all in there. How much is your income? Well, my income is how much I say it is. And if they want to make something out of it, and I've never found any of them here that yet wanted to do that. So you see, the income is what I say it is. Because now, if they want to uh, present a bill, and uh, if it exceeds the income, maybe they've set the credit limits of the card there, so I'll have to keep it within that. But uh, or tell them here, well, then I'm going to have to apply for more credit here so that uh, my income here can clear. But you'll have to give me a bill that's bigger than the one, the last one you did, because when you accept the bill. That's the order for money. That's a money order. That's it's like you fill out a Sears Roebuck order and they're ordering up money. So when you take and accept it and attach the draft to it and say pay it to the order of that guy here, you give it back to him and say, I agree. That's so all you're doing is you're closing escrow on it here and there's no more issue. Therefore, there's no more reason to appear in court and give any oral testimony. Because there is no more issue. But you see, they continually keep trying to prod you to see if you know here what you're talking about. And the minute you do things that indicate here that, ah, oh, well, maybe you've got a little argument in you here, why they're going to drag you in there. It might be a good idea if while the Jews are uh, celebrating Passover, we start the Christians having a pass-through celebration. Well, how are you going to do that here? You're going to have, have to run through the gauntlet here. Yeah. But Jesus Christ already passed through for us. So as a result of him being appointed heir in Hebrews 1 and says, saying that he's a surety of a better covenant in, in Hebrews 7.21, then you go to Romans chapter 8 where it says we've been adopted as sons and as such are heirs and made joint heirs with Christ. So if he's been made heir, joint, he's made heir, in other words, a pointed heir, which is the word partitioning and apportionment. I think I told you, we talked about that one. Yeah, yeah. And then the definition of those words takes you to the word proprietor, which, and according to Webster's 1828 dictionary, states, and I quote, owner, one who has absolute title to a thing, whether in possession or not. And when we have believed in the living Jesus Christ and his propitiation for sins or debt, through his redemption, then we become, at the twinkling of an eye, the closing of the Old Covenant account, the opening of the New Covenant account, we become joint heirs with him, i.e., 
we became joint holders of the title to the earth with him. And then I believe this ties in also. When he said it is finished on the cross, to die, which means it has been completed, that is a fulfillment of, that's John 19.30, that's a fulfillment of Matthew 5.17 on the Sermon on the Mount where he says, do not think that I came to abolish the law or the prophets, I did not come to abolish but to fulfill. So he fulfilled it on the cross, which means it's complete. So what happens with us, and I believe this is what Paul's writings are all about through the Gospels and through his epistles, I'm sorry, not Gospels, mm -hmm. his epistles, when he says that we are attaining uh, our maturity in Christ, which to be more Christ-like, that in essence is our mind starting to fulfill what is already a fact. The fact is, is that that completeness that Christ established at his death and resurrection becomes ours at the instant we believe, but our minds aren't ready to handle it yet. So when he says when he began his ministry in Matthew 4, 17, the very first thing he says, he says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And the word repent means to literally change your thinking. And then Paul writes to verify that that is true in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, this phrase, this is the key. He says, transform, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renewing your mind is to change your thinking and understand the fact is that you already are complete in Christ. Now the maturity process is where you actually recognize something that is already a fact. And that's why the word repent, which is to change your thinking, and Paul says trans be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is a full-blown transformation that now it's already a fact, but the transformation is finalized when you actually recognize what was already completed by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And when that takes place, you've reached the level of maturity, and now you have, now in essence, at that point, you complete the process of becoming a joint heir with Christ, holding the title deed to the earth with him. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Preferred stock. It's not preferred. Preferred, it's not common or unclean. Yes. So, mm -hmm. now, to get it into our practical day-to-day -day use, you see, I don't know if that's even the right way to spell the uh, the word Pentagon, but uh, you get the idea. But that's really what we're talking about in repent. And this is why all of this took place here around uh, the city of Rome. Oh. Because it's a municipality. Now, if you're talking about all the catacombs and where the Christians hid and things like that underneath the city, well, let's say that this is the city, and you see, let's say here that we have catacombs. Mm -hmm. Can you see over there? Mm -hmm. It's too hard to see from the other side here. But the catacombs, so now let's just say this is the... the uh, those on the left, or are they on the right, depending on the point of view? And then we have those over here, or do they appear this way? Okay, this being the General Assembly. Okay, but on the back side, that would be the sanctuary. But it's probably not that way because we have these are below the ground. That's probably the house of the Sadducees. And you see the other one here would be above ground, the Pharisees. And they all have to agree because uh, however we would express it, you know, you, you'd have here ground zero or the black hole in space here, which would be the decimal point. Mm -hmm. But uh, the with what you were saying here, when we reduce this to numbers, see, I'm going to bring it down. Probably we should do that uh, now. Is when we're using a draft and we're issuing at site, pay to the order of, to whoever gave us the offer. We're closing escrow on it. But what we're doing is we're saying here that these two factions here have come together. Or it could be the upper house and the lower house. 
Or, you see, when you're talking about a bishop, you're talking about fore and aft here, you're not talking about... And so that could also be... Time could be involved there, or could it? Because it's the viewpoint here of the, uh, of the, of the observer, and so you see, you're, there still is no time fore and aft. It's all the same time as it is in the vertical above areas. and below. And so the, uh, the only time that you have time, you see, is in the Passover. You know, it's horizontal. And that's where interest here is, is the bridge between capital and principle. And interest is only going back one way, it's one way traffic to to the uh, principle. Now I suppose a loan could be called a one-way street from principle to capital. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So now maybe we can figure out on these one-way streets which way the uh, commerce is running. Now let me give you a, a suggestion. You take a look at your Secretary of State's office and see if there's one-way streets running by the block that the office is actually established on. And a lot of times you'll find a one-way street going <clears throat> on one side and a one-way another coming the opposite direction, and then you'll have the avenues the other way. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes here when you correspond with them, you can tell whether you're getting a square deal or not if you've been all the way around the block. Because they'll have it in their in their return addresses here, which but you're getting the idea now here at how much correspondence you'll have to have with them until you get a square deal. Okay, never thought of that. Yeah, I never thought of that before. On the avenue, or that's a venue. Mm -hmm. Okay, but how about here when you got revenue? Mm -hmm. Okay. The. Uh, you see, because if you have the avenue, you see the A is a negative draw from its parent, the capital, A. Okay, and when you have, you, you remember the Greek soldier who ran the 26 miles? Yes, a marathon. The marathon? At marathon, yeah. And what, what did he do that for? To the, report the results of the battle, supposedly, to the... Uh, to his to commander his, or to right. the whoever, whoever was the chief. Right. I don't know whether he, I don't know whether he was reporting to the chief or if he was reporting to the high priest. I always know he died right after he reported. <laughs> he died. Yeah, okay, well then, you see, because when you're dealing with the horizontal, you see, and then the, the money out here, you're dealing with the chief the priest. When you're dealing with this, you're dealing with the high priest. In either cases here, when you're talking about dealing with goods and services, this here would not be goods, it would be services. <clears throat> because you're dealing with the intangible. That's what a priest deals with. Yeah. Okay, so you either have the chief priest or high priest, and so whenever they use the word chief, you know here that he's operating here with interest. Oh, yes. Okay. Chief of police would be a priest. Yeah, yeah, he's dealing with uh, with services. And they're determining here what goes on in the emergency room, in the interstate. 
your interstate. And see, those who are in the emergency room officially have to be registered nurses, don't they? Yes. Yes. So what do they do? Do they call the registration or a residency? Well, that probably that will have to be examined to see exactly how they do that, because the uh, because didn't Joseph and Mary go up to be registered? And don't most of the translations of the Bible here say they went up to be taxed? Yes, they do. So the word taxed and registration is one and the same. Whoa! Yes. Yeah. Absolutely true. And they went up. So when you take a look at the map of Palestine or Israel, you know, I think that... They went from... Oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, I'm just wondering here where, where uh, Bethany is, or uh, Bethlehem is exactly here from Jerusalem. It's, it's, it's always uphill to Jerusalem from everywhere, whether you're coming from the south or the north. Mm -hmm. But when they went to, uh, according to what I understand in the text, when they went to... Bethlehem, they went from Nazareth of Galilee, which is to the north, and I'd have to see a topography. I have got some topography maps at home mm -hmm. on that territory, and I don't think I brought it. I've got my Thompson. Yeah, well, that's all right. Here, right. You, you drew, yeah. drew some to where? To uh, uh, Bethlehem. Does that have topography there? Jerusalem there. Okay, so uh, Bethlehem is south of Jerusalem. Yeah, but it's uphill to Jerusalem also. Mm -hmm. So, so Beth, Bethlehem is, so it would... Beth Bethlehem would be downhill then from Jerusalem. Yes, it would be. And going south. Yes. Well, that, that might be how, when we refer to people going south with the money in this country, you see, they go to Mexico with it? Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well... It's another South American country. Maybe that's what's going on here. The... Uh, because maybe that's what was happening in Vietnam here, and our military was supporting South Vietnam. Sure, because the capital was always in Hanoi, not in, not mm -hmm. in Saigon. Yeah. We were establishing another government, in essence a counterfeit or pirate or mirror image government or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. Straw government. So, they, administratively they got the, ex the opposite results. I don't know whether they tried to do it through the special forces of the military or, you see, when they were, when our military gets deployed into that jurisdiction here, that would be foreign deployment. Foreign deployment, you see, is not posse comitatus. So it couldn't have been, because posse comitatus would all be uh, a reserve, special forces. But it would be special forces under the reserves, not under, not under the National Guard. Because National Guard are foreign deployed troops. <clears throat> because the reserve units of this country here are <clears throat> disposed here for internal security. The, the reserves are for internal security. Yeah, the National deployed. Guard is for foreign deployment. Okay. Yeah, National Guards here are foreign deployed. Okay. But see, when, you, when you're using those terms, you have to use those terms in, in uh, respect to it being uh, um, an international uh, scene. So you see, it's, it has to be internal or external, which would be public or private. See, because there are no all the states of the world here are states of the United States and an international government. And that was all created in 1913 with the Federal Reserve Bank. Because it created all, <coughs> all uh, na uh, international stock markets. So anybody that was investing in any international market that, that uh, was a company that was feeding uh, Hitler secretly. They didn't, nobody knew here where these companies here were uh, actually s selling their goods and so it was all secret here when the German government here was paying them all this money so these companies that were making money at that time were probably supporting Hitler and everybody in this country here was uh, was investing in it yes they were so you know they can holler all they want yeah. 
but uh, uh, they were they were actually uh, uh, financing Hitler's uh, war machine. Yeah. Fascist government here, and uh, if they read the book *The Prince*, which I understand, Machiavelli. Yeah, Machiavelli's uh, *Prince*. That's I understand is required reading for all members of Congress now. Oh, wouldn't be so, surprised. So if that's the case, you see now they learn here that uh, to maintain military or political power is by uh, uh, murder and extortion. Period which gives them their military power, or their political power. That meets with all the criteria that I've read over, that fits the last 2,000 years plus of the secret orders and the secret rights of all these different organizations. Basically, yeah. the state was coined. Yeah, okay. Now, somebody mentioned the, uh, the Masons, and <clears throat> I'm sure that the so-called secret orders of the, of the Masons here would be in respect to them being able to uh, personally view the public side and also the private side of, of things. And when they reach the 33rd level, you see, this has to do with the, uh, with the, uh, the Federal Reserve being The reserve requirements, because in the uh, the Federal Reserve Board of Governors report on the uh, the Federal Reserve and the actual mechanical operation of it, they gave an example in there, and I don't know here. Who all has gotten these? I put these out from time to time. But what it did, it laid out the, the actual function of the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. And the first example they gave here was a 15% reserve requirement based on a $100 deposit. Okay? And on a 15% reserve, how much money can you loan out? Uh, the bank, 85 percent, but how much is that? It's 96 times or something like that. Well, no, it's 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 85 dollars. 15 percent of that hundred, you'd hold it on on deposit. Mm -hmm. You loan out the 85, the but then the 85 here is redeposited again, and then you hold 15 percent of that and loan out 85 percent of the 85, right. and, and uh, until you wind up with zero. A lot of time. Okay, how much is that that you can loan out? I believe it was 666. I've heard this discussion. Oh, $666 on $100. Yeah. Okay, then they give an example of 20%. That's basically the uh, commodities market. Because what do you got to have? You got to have 20% down to own the contract. You own both sides of it then. Okay? <laughs> but why is that? Because it represents commodities. Okay? So with a 20% reserve, how much money here can be derived? This is the very reason that they had to pass the Federal Reserve Act. Because now, with the 15 percent, you see, the uh, 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 reserve requirements, they can loan out this much, and this here is the money that they made available for capitalization. Okay? Can you see that okay? I can when you when, you when move I move. Around. Okay, I'll try and move back and I've forth. I've got it. I've got it. You've got it down. Okay. So then, the uh, so when you and we invest in whatever your enterprise is, 
it takes $666 to create $500 worth of commodity. Okay? That's why they had to take gold and silver out of circulation because of this very discrepancy. And just to make things a short here a little bit, let's take the spread between here and here. It's probably the spread between wholesale and retail, but that's the wilderness. Israel in the wilderness. <laughs> until you fix the interest rates. See, and then you have to have a witness as to how much interest here so you can cover the spread. You got to bring the principal on. Who knows where that is? Okay? Did you guys bring in my water, Jim? We'll get out of here. We'll cut it off here. Okay. So you see what's happening here. They had to come up with HDR 192 and they had to take gold and silver as coin money out of circulation. Why? Because of this. Because if you took all your gold and silver <coughs> and sold it, you only got 500 bucks here to pay off a $666 debt. So if you sell it, now you don't have the money and now you're still in debt 166 bucks. So what has to happen? We have a 10% system. And now is probably when you when we get interested here in the Masons. <clears throat> because with a 10% system, how much money can you borrow? How much money can they loan out here on this? 100 bucks. It's a bigger bigger amount. It's more than 666. <clears throat> yeah, you can now they can uh, raise $1,000. Oh Okay, but you see now you've got enough money to pay off 666. Yeah. Okay. Not upside down. Six, six, six. But you see now, where are we going to get the original monies? From the principal. Yeah, well, you see, from the reserve. So what are the reserve requirements? Well, you see, in that particular text here that I got this from, they give a 4 and a 7% and, and, and it all goes down into, into like your regions and your districts and stuff here to where the banking requirements here had to hold certain percentages of reserves, certain banks. Well, when you added them all together, guess how much it came up to? Thirty-three percent. Well, thirty-three percent of one thousand is what? Six hundred and sixty-six. No. no. Oh, three hundred thirty-three. Right. Three hundred and thirty. Mm -hmm. Thirty-three percent is three hundred and thirty dollars. Right. See, it's not a. It's not a third. See, it's thirty-three percent. That is not one third. Have to thirty-three point three 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 would be a third. Okay. So now, you got six, nine, nine. So you see you've got four tenths of a percent left over. Okay, so now we got a surplus. So you see now, we have enough money to pay off the debt, the capital debt. We have enough money to pay off the capital debt and, but we also have to put up the reserves privately. See, when it goes above 33% here, then these guys in the public here go out of sight. See, it's inverted. So, you see, okay. So now, with the $330 here that we're providing the federal International Monetary Fund with, you see, now we have the money 
to pay off the uh, original capital. All because of public policy. Yeah, mm -hmm. you see, and uh, the and this is why they had to bring on HCR 192 is to prevent the public from uh, uh, continuing on increasing and just relying on this and then forcing people here to, uh, uh, and then they, when they foreclose on this, leaving you with a, with, a, with a balance in there that you couldn't, you couldn't pay unless you go into the 10% bond. 90% of your <coughs> or, uh, possession is 90% ownership? Or 90, <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> if you got the 90, if you got possession here, then you see you all, you, you go in and finance the bond, all you're doing is getting a witness to say, yeah, that's mine. But, and not only that, you see, everybody hollers about the, uh, the uh, encroaching here on your neighbor's property. Mm -hmm. But you see, so they keep expanding the debt and expanding the debt and expanding the debt, right. and they never pay anybody because that always winds up in a zero balance because it's a replevin bond. De debits equal to credits. But once you've got, once you have that under the uh, the ten percent bond, you see, you also have enough money written into the Federal Reserve System so that they can expand the uh, the uh, money supply mm -hmm. without coveting your neighbor's property. It's right within the system itself. This is the accrual. The accrual, yeah. It's not, a, it's not a cash balance here, it's an accrual. But this information was pretty much kept from us understanding. Yeah. So it was only to the benefit of a few, mm -hmm. in essence, and we've been basically kept out of the loop. Yeah. Oh. Until... For sure. You gonna cut it off? No, no. No, oh, he's oh, just oh, saying... Oh, he's okay. being silly. <laughs> yeah. The, My uh, sacred teachers wouldn't do that. <laughs> Okay, so this is one reason there when they, uh, if you are tendering cash money, they say, well, we can't take cash. This is what they're telling you. They're telling you here that this is, this is balanced at zero. <clears throat> now we've talked about it. I've used the word zero so much out of habit, I'm not even sure that's right. Oh. Because it could be, it's probably O. Like Omega? Like no on? Hmm? Noon? <laughs> That's double O. Yeah, but o, is, o represents Omega. It's the last letter of the Greek alphabet, the beginning and the end. Yes, I know. So you see, O is probably the solution. Because... Or, oh my gosh, lives. Oh, lives. Yeah. Well, when I awesome. figured that the, what, the reason that that was probably the, the, the wow. what it really was, was when I was looking into the uh, protocols or protoplasm. And when in the protoplasm of an egg, you have a plasmid. Oh. And when you apply certain enzymes to the plasmid, it splices in to the <coughs> DNA and the RNA. Hmm. The splice here of the chromosome or the, uh, the genes which carry the blueprint here for the reproduction. And it's spliced into the plasmid, and that's where, you know, the life here now is carried on into, into the new issue. So. And it's coming out of protoplasm here, and how do all of these uh, uh, agencies operate? 
the rules here that they operate under. It's the rules of protocol. Those are those are international canon law that govern them. I mean, they. Yeah. Yeah. All over around the world, it's the same procedure in essence. They yeah. Have, I think they even have an office of protocol. They do. Vatican does. Oh, oh sure. The Vatican has an office of protocol. Mm -hmm. They so always come under the information part of the collector, right? Because the what now? The O and part of the alphabet also, right? Yeah, but which alphabet? Is it the Greek or English? It's Greek. I don't know. It's, it's probably Greek. both. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we're saying that the collector is just gathering information. He's not collecting money. He's collecting information. He's collecting information, yeah. yeah. And the information <laughs> is in the plasmid or in the O. And you see, when it's talking about the Mount of Olives here, you're talking about the, the mountain of debt. Yeah. Do you know anybody that raises olives in this state here that doesn't have debt? <laughs> or any state, for that matter. Extend the olive branch. <laughs> Anybody's got a business that's got mm -hmm. debt nowadays. Yeah, 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 yeah. And who was it? Where was it? I was listening to something and somebody was saying here that, uh, oh, it was on the on TV. I don't know if it was on The Millionaire or what it was. And they were asking, what was the first thing that was released here from the uh, Noah's Ark? The dove. Well, oh, no, no, no. The raven, he said, went before the dove. That's right. So what does a raven do? It steals stuff. It's a scavenger. Goes around. And it brings it back to its nest, doesn't it? Yes. Hmm. <coughs> and that was the first thing released, was the raven, to steal things and bring it back to the, to the escrow, the crow's nest. Hmm. Must have been a pirate ship. Oh. Nice. Noah must have been a buccaneer, huh? <laughs> well, he was if he founded the Minoan civilization on Crete, which is the oldest civilization on the planet. I'd been there. Yeah. And a friend of mine pointed out to me that Minoan stands for Noah, and they were the buccaneers of the sea. They were the main guys of commerce in the world. Yeah, okay. That yeah, was yeah. Noah. Yeah, yeah. And it was a ship, the whole island of Crete is just, there's harbors around it, and that's where he would have mm -hmm. had ships docked. And of course, none of the buccaneers here, they didn't carry a double edged sword, single edge, cutlass. Yeah. Yeah. Because the double edge here is of the, that of the sovereign. Cuts both ways. Yeah. So. Oh, my. That's why the Bible is called the sword of the spirit, and it's a double-edged sword. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the you Jesus see, chapter 6. Okay, but now you need to determine which soldiers here are of the land and which ones are of the sea. Because the soldiers carried the sword, and I think... The uh, New true. Testament's definition of those here of the sea here were carrying the spears. The centurion. So you see, when the body of Christ was pierced here, it was pierced here by a maritime soldier who was carrying a spear. It was a Roman soldier who had been maritime, yes. Yeah, and a Roman here being municipal. Right. Now, municipal funds here being issued to banks in the first instant here would be actually the first first death they're talking about or the first execution and then there is redemption from that you know repentance repent right. Right. you know yeah. repenting on <laughs> and uh, from the second death here that there is no recovery those are the surplus bonds held by the banks, which are U.S. Treasuries. Insurance, or Greater, greater Fresno, or greater, greater Sacramento. Okay? The Great Bond, Great Britain. It's horizontal here. Interest is moving in, in time now. So it's only a matter of time until they have to release their grip. And I think actually what they did on this election coming up or that's passed now, I think that they geared all of their interest
to terminate here at the uh, uh, at the end of the year because they didn't have any more. They couldn't leverage it any any farther. That would explain why the one day that Alan Greenspan lowered the Fed discount rate by half a percent spurred a move on both markets, but on Friday, both mar all three markets, Standard & Poor's 500, the NASDAQ, and the Dow all fell mm -hmm. again. And that was only the day after it had gone up. Yeah. That's the today, they, isn't it? They could, that, was that? Today's Friday. Oh, that's right. Yesterday. I don't know what it's yesterday, done today. Yesterday, uh, it, it just... It dropped. Both around, it didn't drop much. That was the close. I was on the computer at midnight last night. And, uh, this morning, yeah. it was down early 140. Well, uh, uh, the, the Dow? Yeah, the Dow and the NAD, both were both. Down. Both? They, you're right, Roger. They can't sustain it. And this would explain your concept of nuclear fission turning into nuclear fusion with the return of the energy back to the nucleus. Yeah. That's the only place here that it can be housed here without any uh, uh, damage. That's why they had to drop the bond, bomb on Nagasaki here in that 72-hour period here. Otherwise, here they'd have probably triggered a, a uh, chain reaction in, in, in well, in the, uh, well, just in the in the uh, world here, where, wherever there was air, not in, not in, uh, not in space, but I think it would have been just in our environment, and so because the, the bomb on Hiroshima here was nuclear fission and the one they dropped on Nagasaki here was nuclear fusion. Hydrogen. It was a hydrogen bomb? Oh was yeah. Bomb? Well sure, that's what fusion is. Right. Uh, you see? Well, oh, that explains the going out and then the returning when right, you see right. the, the test out in the desert? One of them is expansion, Right. the other is contraction. We always thought they were the same. A bomb. Oh, no, no, no. There were three different no, bombs. No, one of them. The first one here was called Little Boy, yeah. and that was that was a uranium uh, explosion. Yeah. And the other one was called Fat Man, which was fusion. Oh my. Which goodness. was hydrogen. Oh. And that's a return back to the nucleus. The sheep were scattered around the world, and now they're returning. Isn't that why we count sheep here when we're trying to go to sleep? <laughs> it's in the darkness here. They're hopping over the fence. They're either coming back home or they're leaving. Yeah. Which one, one is it? <laughs> wow. wow. Isn't that the funds here the banks are dealing with on these overnight loans? Aren't they hopping over the fence? Oh, yeah. So that stuff is all done in the dark. That's why they're condemned for being children of darkness. darkness. And God calls us his sheep and they're counting sheep. That's right. Mm -hmm. They've been counting us. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they don't kill all of us. They've been using us. If they can't, if they can't use this insurance money other than to fix things, yep. you say they spent the, the first debt. Mm -hmm. That's the uh, money they gathered from the principal, I suppose. Yeah, that was the uh, municipal bond issue. Municipal bond. Now, say if, that, if in fact that's gone, the only way they can keep things afloat is by fixing earthquake. And well, the way they're trying, the way they're tr <laughs> yeah, they're trying to uh, to yeah, keep them that. afloat. They're trying to create these national disasters and one thing or another. But see, what these are are equivalent to lifeboats created by the public to float that much debt here. They still can't redeem it. That is energy that is floating here out around in waterless places oh. looking for a place to land. Yes. Like That's the demon. Like Kosovo, now they bomb it, now they fix it. Huh? Oh yeah, yeah, but you see they can't, there's nobody to redeem the debt. Except this, for is, the... this is energy that's dangerous to anybody yeah. that uh, might be uh, uh, using it. You see? And they thought here that they could, the, these people that they've got in some of these government positions, they think here that they have the end uh, and, and the answers, and they don't. Why? Because they have to commit you and I here to the liability. Right. Yeah. If they if they got to go on the hot seat themselves here, they aren't so anxious. No, they're not. You see? But that's what it is. It's the energy that's looking for a place to land. But you see, when it comes to the, to the end, like I say, the end of the millennium here, then you see you get a polarity reverse. 
And that's what I think here, that I'm not sure that they understand that. Mm -hmm. exactly. I mean, I know that there are some people here in the back of this government here that do, <coughs> but... Well, hi, what do you see happening in this reversal? Well, I don't know. I think here that uh, the position that we've taken, mm -hmm. here, if we stay with the credit side, I think we can lock out these other people here that have have uh, uh, extorted from us here our property, and I think they're going to find themselves in the position here that they put us earlier. <coughs> it might be the solutions might be easier than we think here. We might just have to uh, sit here and wait for it. If, theoretically, then, if we if Jesus Christ has been appointed heir, the Greek word is kleidonomon and we are joint heirs with him through adoption as sons, mm -hmm. if he is the principal or the nucleus that the energy is returning to as part of his body, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, talking about each of us making up that body, that energy is returning to us. That means yes. it's returning to us. Mm -hmm. So if you say the, poles are, the, uh, the polarity is reversed with this new millennium taking place and the evidence we're seeing now in the markets that they can't, that they have lost control of something that they thought they could yep. never lose control over. Yeah. In essence, our job then, I think, is to be faithful to Jesus Christ by virtue of the fact that we're not going into debt. We're not, we, we weren't the ones creating this monstrosity. We're the ones that are having these truths revealed to us. There's a little verse. It's at the end of a series of parables. It's in Matthew chapter 13. It's verse 52. And it's a verse that has had me mesmerized just focusing on that for a number of years now. And it says this. It's after Jesus explains the parables of the sower and the fields to his disciples. And at this point, he asks them if they understand it. And they say yes. That's the only word that's there is yes. And then he says, it, the, then he says the kingdom of heaven, well, he doesn't say the kingdom of heaven, but you can relate it to. It is like a scribe who is a, who's a student of the law, or is a clerk, who becomes a disciple of the kingdom of heaven, Christ's mm -hmm. kingdom, who, like the head of a household, out of his treasure, brings forth things new and old. And it's like having this... Because all the scribes in the scriptures are always with the Pharisees. So it's not talking about those scribes. Those are the scribes that are condemned. And the Greek word is grammatei or something like that, which we get the word, where we get the word grammar from. And also the root word is also where we find the word town clerk. It also comes from the same word. So in Luke 11, it uncovers the parable of the, the Pharisees and the scribes are always together along with the lawyers. There's your unholy trinity as far as I see it. But I'm also saying, though, that... If, if in these last days, at this very last time, Jesus opens up basically the meanings of the, of the scriptures to his people, he reveals it and says, okay, here, now you're going to carry out, like you've been saying, in essence, Roger, the fulfillment, or i.e. the redemption, mm -hmm. that I have already done on the cross. Now you are going to go act it out, in essence, by what you do and say as you live your life in this world. And, and so what, I, what I'm seeing then is this, as this body of Christ... That is, those people, living, breathing people that have trusted in this, in the, the true Jesus Christ, not the fake ones. But when this, when this faith begins, um, that he is bringing this body together, and he says, in essence, that he's the Godhead. He's the head of this body. So as this body comes together, we start carrying out the redemption, and it's, it's, in essence, it's him doing it through us, and this chain reaction that he's already set up 2,000 years ago to take place is taking place, and we, our, our job is just to carry out whatever it is he's got. I don't, like I said, I don't know all the details yet. I've, I've just been looking at this from a biblical side and, well, and, and from what you've been sharing with the return of the energy to the nucleus. Well, when the old, you see, uh, the last time here they saw Jesus, or that's, that's when he went up. Yeah. Well, that's what happens when you... Uh, do your first chemistry lesson. And uh, I did this the other day here, so uh, Jim already knows what I'm going to do. I'm drawing the ancient Bunsen burner. We all used those in chemistry. <laughs> the, can the candle. Okay, and so now The student always takes an assignment from his teacher. So it's an assignment that he gets here to do an experiment in the laboratory in his chemistry class. Okay? 
And of course, the one, the very first thing we have to learn in chemistry is the Be Faraday's. So that's, this is the mathematics here that you have to, have to know before you can understand any of these things you're talking about and reduce them to something here that we can put our hands on today. And when we were talking about OLEBs, see, the blueprint for the uh, raising of the body again was in that O that went up. Okay? As a matter of physics, we can follow this. Okay? So now, the assignment in physics is to take and pass H2O3 or H2O2. And expose it to the fire. But first of all, we have the atomic weights here. We already know what those are. Okay? And then we pass it through the flame and weigh it again. And now what do you got as the end result after you did that? H2O, water. This is before? Right. After? I suppose we could call this prior. Or priority. Now, after, you know, the significant thing about this is, this here is the very, the very foundation here of uh, the uh, technology for electromagnets. You can't develop an, an electromagnet here without this. So, magnetism. But you see, and, and now you'll, you'll see the reason for this is because when you pass this through the fire, you heat it up and uh, the, the elements that come from Jacob's Well, if you want to call it that, uh, they will, you cannot, it converts it to heat and then you cannot weigh it in gravity. Okay, it's weightless. Why? Because it's heat. And see, that's what happens here when you say like you take a, a piece of uh, black wool and expose it to the sun. If you've got delicate enough instruments there, you can, you can, uh, you can show that that black fabric there increases in weight. But you see, you can't prove it out here with, with a, uh, a regular microscope with the naked eye. The only way you can do it is with an electron microscope and with that kind, with charged instruments. See, you can't, you can't do it here with just natural methods, except these are natural methods, okay? Uh -huh. So now, I pass it through the fire, and all of a sudden here, two, uh, two 
uh, atoms of oxygen disappear. And now, how are you going to tell here what was in the original to get fixed? See, we have to fix it now. We have to fix it with that insurance money. How can you prove here what this was over here? Now you've got an automobile wreck. How are you going to uh, make them air put up all the all the uh, the money that this thing costs? They're only giving you the wholesale price for it, mm -hmm. and you probably paid retail. Yep, did. Mm -hmm. Happened to me. This is how you you do it. You see, you take okay. Let's go back to the beginning and see what kind of a car it was and how much was it worth. Okay. And you get. So now, you carry that back over to this side of the ledger. Is this the double cross? You're crossing over. Okay. So, that's how you figure it out. Now, to get into what you were talking about, on the scribes, well, this is now we're not in expansion anymore, we're in contraction. So the general contractor offers a contract, and all the subscribers, they uh, uh, agree to it, and when they sign the contract, they get a credit, they now have credit that they can go into anywhere in the public system and charge up their their goods that they need to commit to the contract. So their credit is good all over the place. So when they sign those instruments here with the uh, with the suppliers, that's basically creating the money here that's uh, creating the debts. And uh, I used to work on a federal project years ago and uh, I worked as a welder for American Bridge, and I could see that all the uh, subcontractors on that particular project, most of them filed bankruptcy when they were done, and that's what supplied the general contractor with his bond, because he didn't have anything. It's the subcontractors that put all the substance into the account, and then when they were in there and they were certified finished on their project, they had to put up a bond here before they could be paid the cash. And if they didn't do it, they filed bankruptcy. So they filed bankruptcy, and that, in, in essence, committed all of the substance to the general contractor here that was already in the account. But you see, in the meantime, they'd overcharged all their accounts and all the stuff here, and they sold it all in the black market here and stuffed it in their pocket and never reported it. And that's how they're doing it, big time in this country. See? And it's all these people here that are operating here under the Corps of Engineers mm -hmm. with license. And they've got a license to steal, and that's exactly what they're doing. They aren't going to like to hear this tape, <clears throat> you see, because that puts a finger on them real good. And they're going to have a hard time to escape it when we're using mathematics like this, see. <clears throat> so anyway, why don't we cut that thing off here and we all take a break here. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Because this is a, this okay. applies. Yeah. <coughs> okay. We were. Where were we at? Well, I can find out in a heartbeat. This no, thing no, does play back. No, before you jump. Oh, I see. No, you, you were, were talking about, about. You were talking about the metropolitan, the metro, and the, and the connection with the cities and the the monopoly. Okay, the 200 cities. You see, we're, we were talking about this being, really under the rules of monopoly, oh. and I mean literally. Uh -huh. That's that, uh, incredible. When. When I discovered that the bond here that they had used on me to uh, uh, run me through the prison system uh -huh. was not in the hands of the Internal Revenue, but I found out that the state had the account. It had been assigned to the state, apparently. And uh, so when I wrote to the state, I finally got them to admit what the uh, financial, or what was really the value of my, my business and property 
probably the last time before they start tampering uh, with, with it in the background. And it, here I get a notice from the state after it took me about eight months of writing to them here when I realized that the Internal Revenue did not have my account. And I found out about that because I had a senator from Minnesota that was helping me run the Internal Revenue down. And he got hard on them and made them come to an answer me. And when <clears throat> the answer that I come back was sort of inconclusive in a way, but except that I knew that they did not have the account. They would have had to give it to me because uh, the senator got real hard on him and they got real nasty with him. And so they were nasty enough with him, I was at the point of telling him here, well just, you don't have to pursue it that aggressive for me. Because I see here what they're going to do with you here. You're allowed to be in here with me here. <laughs> like Congressman harder. George Hansen was from yeah. Idaho. Yeah. So anyway, but as a result of that, I knew enough now that I had to look elsewhere for who was the holder of the bond, and I knew that once I could find out who that was, I could confront them here, and that was the basis here for them holding me in prison, and now I could do something about it. Wow. See, they just keep hiding it and running. Hide and seek, you know, this here is the Battle of New Orleans here, that's what that song here represents. <coughs> oh, yeah. You know, the, uh, the, uh, what was it? The British kept a coming. You remember here we fired my, or we fired once more, and uh, they turned around and ran, and they ran through the briars and they ran through the bushes. Yeah. You see, well, the uh, but this is what they were doing. See, they were running away here any time I was trying to find where they uh, they were hiding the uh, claims. Well, do you have the to set on? As a result of that, the uh, what the cassette is it on? Did you turn it on? What's that? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah he's oh, yeah. No, I've got my uh, oh, other, my other recorders yeah. taking every okay. word down this room okay. and the next room. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. So where was I at? <laughs> I <don't laughs> the briars and the brummels and the and they just well, kept running yeah, and went to the uh, bushes. The, but you wanted to find the holder of the bond. Right. Oh, okay. So as soon as uh, uh, the senator uh, made them answer me, and I got a written answer from the Internal Revenue, then I knew they didn't have the bond. And it took me probably six or eight months or so to, of writing basically to the state to find out here where, where it was. And it could have been within two or three states, maybe four even. And uh, so I find out here the state of Minnesota had it. They sent me a, a uh, statement showing the account. And I could agree on that, that that account was uh, my, the value of my property because I, I could see that it represented everything here that I, I would have put on a bank statement at that time before they started tampering with my stuff. And, uh, <clears throat> which was, at that point, it was uh, $1,389,000,000, approximately. Oh. And, uh, which was the value of my business at that time. And, uh, and by the way, when, when uh, I, the judgment and commitment order that came against me, you see here, that was actually written out but it was written out $1,389,000,000. That's because they sold the bond into the international scene. It was $1,389,000. But you see, when you go international, they just add three zeros to it. Right. But see, I didn't know any of this at this point because I got the uh, statement back from the state of Minnesota, from the Department, Minnesota Department of Revenue, and uh, it had everything very exact down there that I know that they took it from my property descriptions here back from years back when all this first started, probably back in about 1975 or 6. And, uh, and I could tell, because I had a, a friend of mine that was in the prison there uh, who was a Polish, he was from Poland, but he was an engineer, and he was an engineer responsible for building a city or city facilities 
In other words, almost the whole city on the West Bank over in Ramallah, where all the political turmoil was going on, and, and I'm sure that that was one of the reasons they had him rounded up here in the prison, because of all the finance that had to be committed to something like that. So he didn't understand the finances as well as I did, but he understood the bookkeeping and the, and the symbols that were used to designate what it is, because he's used to reading blueprints, you know, here for massive projects. So he was the one that interpreted what that statement from the state meant. And he made, a, he made a comment in there. He said, some of that is Russian accounting, he said. Because he used to do business in Europe here, in Russia, Italy, and all over, all over Europe. And he could speak fluent Russian. And uh, so anyway, so when he starts to pinpoint what this was saying, I got that notice from the, uh, from the state of Minnesota on the 30th of November, 1994. So, that night, I, I uh, conferred with my Polish friend, Yahtzee was his name, and uh, I started to compose a letter, and so over the next day or so here, I composed uh, my letter to the Minnesota Department of Revenue, and it basically just said, uh, the accounting I received is accepted for value, or is accepted. I think that's all I used at that time. Please collect the account and pay the pay the bills. That's all I really told them. And I sent sent it back to them. Well, I sent the letter out on the second of December, which was only two days here after I had gotten it. And on the fourth of December, or they got the letter on the fourth of December. I don't even remember anymore how I know that, but I know that they got it on the 4th. And on the 6th of December, Orange County filed for bankruptcy. Well, that didn't mean anything to me at the time. But because I had my Polish friend there, he's used to reading industrial or uh, uh, engineering industrial journals. And I'm getting a subscription to the Wall Street Journal. So, he starts reading these articles in there, and we're reading about this bankruptcy in Orange County. I mean, that's all over everything. And on one of the inside pages, the, uh, he was looking at it along with me. We were both sitting down reading the paper in the law library one day, and, and uh, he said, uh, you should look at this. And so we started to discuss what was on this page. Here was the Orange County article, and he said, that's your account. And he says, here's the reason why. Because he and I had discussed here at the time I went into the military, and he was, we were discussing when the military actually pays bonds. And, you know, and uh, that he said, because the uh, article about the Hubble telescope was on the same page as the the uh, Wall Street or the uh, Orange County bankruptcy fiasco, and then how it was laid out, whether it was on the left and it, whether it, a lot of it was vertical and horizontal and where the body of it was, and how it related to the other items that were on that page. And he said, these are industrial journals here, and uh, this is how it relates. And so he was asking me about it, and so the, the interesting thing was the time frame, because in the Hubble Telescope article, it was giving a little bit of the prior history of it, okay. and my summing it up now uh, indicates that uh, my bond that I was involved with in the military at the time of the original financing of the Hubble Telescope this was probably the military bond that was used here for the initial uh, building of it. Or it was one of the sub-bonds here that was used here for some uh, uh, subsequent development of it. Maybe, it, I don't know whether it would have been the initial one or not, because this was in 1956. So, from that standpoint, then I begin to watch and read the articles. There was something in the paper here about twice a week here on Orange County, right? For a whole year and a half, sure. You know, and uh, 
pretty soon I saw the city here that I, I lived in here, Moorhead, Minnesota here was listed in there. And at that time, the tally on the number of cities that were involved were like 189 cities. And Moorhead was one of them. Well then, it starts to tell about the brokers that were involved, and it was like Piper Jaffray here as a national broker. And this was the broker that was in the city that I knew of, or in Moorhead, to where they were recipients here of the account that was stolen. Some detective for the Fargo, North Dakota Police Department broke into the international or into the internal revenue files and stole the records. And that was account, my, one of them was my account that was sold to Piper Jaffrey, the broker. And it was probably done to finance here the municipal projects here of Moorhead through Clay County where I lived. And I knew, I had some personal contact here with the, uh, the uh, Sheriff's Department regarding my property. I'm not going to get into that here, it's too, too detailed. But, so I knew that there was, a, there was a nexus there, there was a link between the county and now this explained what was going on in the background. And why this detective from the Fargo Police Department here, we, uh, at first we didn't know who it was, he claimed to be an internal revenue agent. So what he was, he was an agent here that was using my account to finance here all their undercover activities here in the metro area. Fargo and Moorhead. So, the, uh, as I began, I kept reading all of these articles in the Wall Street Journal over the years. Uh, it all started to make a picture. And so then, they printed extensive articles there on Piper Jaffrey, on Piper Jaffrey confessing to all of their activities and repaying millions and millions of dollars here to the city of Moorhead. Well, come to find out, when they had financed the project right in Moorhead, they sold the account to Orange County. And it has to do with uh, mutual funds funding, or uh, municipal bonds funding mutual funds. That's what it is. So they're using the municipality. They have to identify a, a principal in the municipality, and that's what they were doing. That's why they stole my account. <coughs> they sold it to uh, Orange County, and Merrill Lynch was the banker for Orange County on this end, okay? And the very day that Merrill Lynch got the account, he sold it into the Japanese stock market. Stock market. That's where it went international. Okay? So now they had to have the principal, in fact, in that international scene. So that's why the bond here went from 1 million, 389 million, or 1 million 400,000 as to why Orange County, when they filed bankruptcy, the first <coughs> issue that came out of that bankruptcy filing here was $1,400,000,000. So that's all they did, is they took that account, mainly of mine, and added three more zeros to it. So instead of it being $1,400,000, it was $1,400,000,000. Because that's what they do. When they go three zeros, they go to another generation. You see? And so, and you see, I have other reasons to believe, believe and know this, because when they first arrested me and started process, processing me and, and not any of the writs or anything here that we used here to where they normally have to come to account here under the statutes, hmm. there wasn't any accountability for them. So I reported the, uh, when I had to put up the bond, it was a $50,000 bond here, and I put up $2,500 and signed a PR here for the $47,500. But I reported a $50,000 transaction to the Internal Revenue Service. Okay. Well, later on, I find out here that the U.S. Marshals here went to the U.S. Attorney looking for the $50,000, or a million fifty thousand. In other words, I was worth a a million dollars or so to them, plus the fifty. But see, they could turn me over, but they still were sh sh short fifty grand. Yeah. So on that basis here, they couldn't release me, apparently. So what they did, they sold the whole contract into the international market because that was the only place there was enough money to pay for it. 
and that's what we saw here when we saw that 10% here. Right. See, that's the kind of uh, uh, money they were, they were dealing with here that can pay off all of the other indebtedness. Well, as I watched the Wall Street Journal over time, pretty soon I began to see that the 189 cities was finally tallied at 200. Now, isn't it interesting here that that's an even 200 yeah. cities? Well, there, I'm, there's a scheme in the entire world here on this uh, regional financing that whether there's going to be 200 cities or hubs under one super city oh. or whether worldwide there's only going to be 200 cities that are going to be the uh, core region here for the, uh, the uh, regional financing of the world. That's probably what it is. I'm not sure. There's, there's a lot of other people that are into some of this here a lot okay. more sophisticated than I am. So, but you're, you're getting enough out of that as to where I'm going with that. Yes. That's, there, there's, there was a year and a half of looking at this here with people there who were, who were highly educated here in, in uh, engineering that were looking at this and telling me here how to read the, the journals. And, I mean, I wouldn't hardly know how today except here that I know all this stuff here has relative values that using this right here, this kind of uh, mathematics here, you can link it all together. And you can, you can uh, start to decipher the uh, substance of what they're really talking about, or the mystery, or Mystery Babylon, is yeah. that what it is? Because when we get into the draft, and when we start to talk about the draft, then you see this is going to start to show the uh, that uh, <coughs> sum this up here with the numbers, because the numbers on the draft are not getting into the capital. But we can get in that together. But you see, the capital. You see, when you write a personal check, you you, you write the numbers here uh, at the end of who you're paying to, and then. You start with a capital letter here. If it's five hundred dollars, you're going to write the letter or the word five hundred. Right. But you see, it begins with a capital letter, I and it's a sentence. And when you have a sentence here, what do you commit the sentence to? You know, the. Uh, but you see, when you, these drafts that we've been using here, you see. The sum, and then you see you just write the, you just put the number in again here. You're not gonna you're not gonna give a capital to that number. Say if you if you got the number five, you're just gonna put the number five in there. You see five zero with two zeros, and then it's gonna be D O L S yeah. zero zero cents C T S. But you see the capital letter is not in uh, being used here to. Uh, be the backside of that number here. You've got you've got a number both places, which would be the the uh, summary judgment. So sum. Uh, the old check writers. Right? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. They, they didn't capitalize it, did they? The old check writers they wouldn't capitalize anybody. They didn't. The check writers. Yeah. Well, I don't think so. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the check you, writers here just uh, yeah. Just like you explained. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's some. That's some Mary. S U M M A R Y. And Mary here is the mother here of the Redeemer. Not the father. The mother. Some Mary. And there's more than one Mary. We also have Mary Magdalene, too. There's a couple more, too, I think. Yeah. So you see that whenever you look at a broker's statement, you see he's got a lot of some Marys on there. Yeah. Depends on whether it's on the left or on the right. Yeah. You know, 
know, or top or bottom, you know, or on the shoulders or in the pockets or at the feet, you know. The, uh, I suspect, I've suspected for a long time that the brokers actually, that brokerage statement of account that they give you from a, from a stock broker or a commodity broker mm -hmm. would be the person. I mean, that is a man here, and then every aspect has numbers on both sides here, whether he's a cripple or he's not, or he's, he's whole, or it could be uh, uh, the pirate here with one, one wooden leg and one eye and one hand, you see, like we got Long John Silver. That, that's, a, that's a national figure, too. So he doesn't have two of any of those here, only one. <coughs> so he's a pirate. Wow. Yeah, not balanced. Hmm? Doesn't balance. High rate. Pi, 22 sevenths. You see. So. I'll leave that for the mathematicians. Or the <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, but that's, that's just not me. A, yeah. 3.17 is possible. <coughs> huh? Which is 22.7. 3.14. Yeah. Okay, got it. 3.141. Okay, I see what you're doing. Yeah. High oh. rates. So you see, it's talking about gyrations or cycles, and that's what we're talking about with this regional financing and everything. It's everything here that's, that operates in cycles, business cycles. So those are areas you have to get into to understand the, what, fully what the Bible is talking about, because it's talking about commerce. And, uh, and a lot of times, when it's talking about uh, the door to the house, for instance, here, this could be the warehouse, see? And it's not a door here that you and I just walk in as an individual here. It's probably a door here that you have to open the door and get the forklift in to take out your, your, uh, your, your pallet here and you're buying in bulk. You're not, and so you don't, under, they don't, you don't understand the terms a lot of times until you look at it from that standpoint. Because the the uh, the basis to get to magnify your understanding of that Bible uh -huh. is, uh, of course, it's Greek. But uh, you have to get into studying the uh, the history of medieval Europe mm -hmm. to get a full grasp on it, because the uh, the rules are the rules of the dowry. Curtsy and dowry, curtsy and dowry. Heraldry? Hmm? Heraldry too? Heraldry too? Heraldry, it all goes with it. It all has its relative value. So the uh, the dowry and curtsy, so what is the dowry, uh, our modern dowry in this country? Today, huh? Dow Jones. Dow Jones Industrial. Oh. In dust trials. In dust trial average, yeah. Dust trials. In dust. Wasn't it Martha here that washed the dust here from the feet of oh, the master? Or anointed him with oil? <laughs> Why did she do that here? Maybe so that the dust would stick on his feet? Because oil attracts dust. Yeah, it does. Um, Japanese know. custom. Huh? Japanese custom. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, Japanese, you know, here that's vertical. Yeah. Vertical integration here. And then they move from right to left here in their language. Except that the Japanese here are an island, so that they're just the, the imperialists. Right, like England. Just like Britain. Imperialism. Imperial. You know, and 
and that's what people like Peter the Great and all of them finance here, their, their move into the uh, uh, taking over the uh, world commerce. The Great Bond. And that's all imperialism here, but you see the uh, Britain is horizontal, and of course the Japanese are vertical. What's the curtsy? Well, the curtsy was the lady, uh, oh. apparently, yeah. bowing to the king, in other words here, uh, recognizing the, uh, or giving to the king there his uh, recognition. All you have to do is look at the ballroom floor and see here what the protocol was. Hmm. Because the, uh, the female is the keeper of the house. And nowadays they're keeping a lot of houses. <laughs> Except yours. But somebody, yeah. But that was the ladies in waiting that got yours. <laughs> Yeah. They were waiting for a <laughs> Well, see, that's what the king gets. He gets the uh, he gets the queen and the ladies in waiting. That's all the agencies. Hmm. Like, what would the curtsy be today? Well, it would be the uh, agency recognizing the uh, the uh, account or claim here of the. The king, but you see, that's the artificial one. That's got to be the straw man, the business organization. See, the uh, <coughs> the name in all caps. You see, because like I said before, when I they ask me, "Well, who's your employer?" Well, then I give them my name in all capital letters. I mean, but I, How do you do it? because I don't do it orally here, I just do it uh, with a pen. If, uh, if I get into it with them on the phone, you see, there's times here when they call me and they're making a promotion over the phone and they say, well, just give me your credit card, or they keep on moving and assuming here that oh, I'm going to give them my bank information, but I give them the name of the bank and stuff here, but I absolutely won't let them into the bank. You can't never. And uh, then, uh, you know, if they get cute, I just tell them, I'm not going to pay with a debt instrument. I'm going to pay with a money order. Oh, well, you can't pay a money order over the phone. And I said, yeah, I know. So just give me the information here, and I'll settle it here with, with a money order. <laughs> Send me another presentment that I can accept and return. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't it be interesting to uh, <clears throat> just grab up like three $100 bills and stuff them in an envelope with one of these bills and send it to them because they don't want cash. No, right. they don't. They, they would they, probably return that. Be oh, yeah, or, or eventually they would uh, stick it in some abandoned account. But we're going to get into that because I've got some letters here. It's simple. But uh, for you to just write in here to your states, and ask for the information here if they're holding any assets in your name. Did I understand that you indicate that most states have something on each of us? There are some municipality somewhere in a different state than we're connected? Probably, because you see, I found out my account, uh, the state of Minnesota, when I started to crowd them, mm -hmm. then they assigned the account here into a collection agency in South Dakota. So I pursued the outfit in South Dakota to see if I could get their articles of incorporation. And I found out here that they had registered, and they were registering, I don't know if you'd call it a registered agent, but you see, because there's no registration anymore, you know, they're, they're actually on the, on the public side. But they did show a president, a vice president, and a treasurer. And uh, then they moved out of state here, and then they were operating out of Iowa, but they were registered in South Dakota. And I know that the office number of this collection agency that they gave me used to be an internal revenue officer years ago. 
So all they did here is just just uh, uh, register themselves as a credit union is what it actually turned out to be. Oh. And then they were collection. They were the ones that were the collectors on the account. So when I pursue them, they don't always answer. You're going to have to hit them pretty, pretty square before we're going to uh, make them and flush them out. But they had already given me a bill while I was in prison yet. It's when I got this information, they sent me the bill, and it showed it was a mil it was a 15 different accounts under my social security number that was $66,666.60 a piece plus interest. So they were worth a little more than that. There was just under $5,000 in interest here that had been uh, uh, accumulated on that. So it was a little over a million dollars. It was about a million for almost a million, uh, uh, a million and five thousand. Just under five thousand dollars in interest due. Huh. And uh, so I know that the state of Minnesota farmed it out here and said, that's your tax and you are the taxpayer. Of course I am. We all know that. And they're collecting my tax. Belongs to me, and they said so. They said they're collecting my tax. Oh yeah. And so, <laughs> oh, gosh, that's right. takes the burden off your back. Yeah, well, that's what an acceptance is, you see. And once you accept, you can't be the holder in due course. You got to have a license for that. Oh, that's right. And so, if you're going to do any collection on it, in one thing or another. You see, you're going to have to go through a registered company or a registered agent of some kind to be able to uh, get any, any uh, remedy. So that's why I'm saying that even if the parties, you can't prove here that they have a license of some sort there, you actually have to go through some registered agency to be able to uh, uh, get the release here of the, of the property. It's just a matter of of positive and negative energy here that has to go into the into the into the account to, to render it zero. It's got to cross the bar to go to the fiscal. Say yeah, it probably yeah it would have to cross the bar yeah to get into the fiscal year and or in or and or out. But it has to, you see it it's got to uh, be rendered an exchange. Not a transfer. A transfer here uh, is an indication here that there's no exchange. Because it's a transfer is just between industrial organizations. Oops. Oh. You see? Oh, but right. the exchange means here that it has penetrated a foreign border. That's what Hitler used here to wage war on his neighbors here. He, he, uh, uh, staged an event here that uh, penetrated the borders and now he had an incident report. And that's an incident report that uh, you use in physics here where a forensic examiner <coughs> can lay out his spreadsheet and uh, give an account, a registered account here, the incident. See, because they can't admit that there's any money or any value. You see, the value of dollars there that we talk about a lot of times really isn't dollars anymore because when you, you give the credit sign, uh, those are just international units. So you see algebra comes into effect here, you see x equals 50,000 or right. or they can even use another number sure. you know 5 or 4 could equal 50,000 or you see because I happen to know that in the prison when we were they would come on me here with a fine here $100,000 here you're going to have to pay this well then I'd tell my counselor I said well then get me form 24 for the Bureau of Prisons form, form 24. And uh, 
I'll see you in your office tonight here and I'll pay the fine. So, in this one case here, he shows up in there, but he doesn't show up with Form 24. Oh, I said, why don't you have the Form 24? And he said, well, this form that I've got will do the same thing here. It's just it, that this is the long form. Well, of course it's the long form. It just takes longer here for the payment here to find its way home. But you see, I didn't fight with them because anytime they've got something to offer here, I'm willing to take a look because I want them to reveal all their secrets. And the longer I stay in there and the more uh, incidents we have, the more I'm going to learn, you see. Because every time they do something here, they have to reveal their secrets. Mm -hmm. So, the uh, so you see, when he uh, asked me then, see, he ran away from me for about a week. Almost every day, I was trying to corral him here and get this thing paid so I could uh, get on my way and get home. I didn't want to sit in there for the seven years here that they had me looking at, and. Uh, and he kept running away from me. Well, then I found out later on here why he was running and what was going on during that time. He was visiting with the U.S. Attorney back in our home area, you know, and he's trying to figure out how he's going to present himself here when I corner him here for the uh, paying of the fine because he knows. When I told him, you be there with Form 24, he knows here I'm going to pay the fine off. Because that so. form is a drawdown on inmate's personal account. Oh, that's essentially a draft. Yeah, but you know what it says? Well, here, maybe I should write it on here. It'll be all right. Because I don't think they use Form 24. I think they've disguised it in a lot of other numbers now. But it's it says... Uh, it's on the internet. Okay, then there's a box in here for you to put uh, put the amount. That's basically here what it says on the first line, and oh, then it okay. goes: charge inmate's account one hundred dollars, and same to this person. And then of course it goes on down. There's a place here for somebody to sign on in the business office. Initials. You have to put the purpose. You know, and you know, and then you just sign it uh -huh. with your uh, uh, inmate number. Okay. Then you know where this goes. He goes to the business office. There's probably two people in there that have to uh, initial it. And then when it goes into the business office, it goes on a schedule. Okay, and so this here, and it has a, and it has a serial number on it and everything, just like a check. Oh. It looks almost like a check, and it's got and it's got carbon copies under it. Well then. That information here is just condensed and it goes on a schedule and then every week or two or a month, it used to be a month I think at one time and then I think it went out every two weeks I think. But And, and that schedule goes directly to a U.S. Treasury Dispersing Office. And when it gets there, the U.S. Treasury Dispersing Office makes out a check that looks just exactly like your, your Social Security checks or whatever. <clears throat> and we had one of these made out to pay a guy's taxes here on his property here in southern Minnesota. $8,014 <coughs> taxes on his real estate. And they made that check out directly to the uh, to the county treasurer in his county. This is while he was in prison? While he was in prison. And see, 
he thought that, you see, people that are in prison there have a commissary account here that you can spend out of. You go to the commissary, you buy this stuff here, and they check it off, check it off of your commissary account. That's what everybody believes is their personal account. It's not theirs. <coughs> that account here is the commissary's account. Your personal account is always at zero. You see? You see, that's what your personal account is. So they're going to take you in, and they're going to interrogate you to find out your, how much money is in your account. And how many people say, well, the money is in there to cover here what I'm doing? Well, no, not really. <coughs> not really, there isn't any money. So you see, the collector is collecting information, and that's what the lieutenant's office in there does. To get you to witness against yourself. So that's that. right. That's what all the interrogation is for, and it's done in its most crude and most simple form at the prison. That's where they develop all this. Stuff. What we look for? You hear what you It's developed to get it's to get you to witness against yourself. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So. But uh, you see, but here, charge the inmate's account with that much and charge the same to whoever you write it out to. And that's just exactly what the, tre uh, the treasury check was made out. Warrant number and everything else. That's a double charge, basically. Right. Because, huh? so that's a double charge. Yeah. It comes to zero. Yeah. Okay, well, that's what you're doing with your draft. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh. Offer an acceptance. Right. Oh, I finally understand it. <laughs> it took long enough. You see, and then there's the draft here. You're doing the accounting on the bottom and telling them here the account is zero today. You know, just <coughs> turn them out. Zero. It might not be zero here. Maybe we're putting the O in there here. Uh, Maybe we need to put the slash through it. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, the O. That's the difference between the O and the zero. You know, it's got it's a slash through it. Right. Zero. The O has got a slash? No, the zero, zero has zero a slash. Has. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Or a dot. Yeah. Or a dot. Oh, yeah. Well, see, we used a lot of those here. In, see, when they used to post our stuff here as to where you had to be and what time and one thing and another here, why then pretty soon these, when you're getting close to going home, then these start showing up here on the... What is it? Well, on, on, the, on the bulletin board uh -huh. here, whenever we go back here to the barracks here, when we look here to see here where, where we're scheduled to be the next day. And, and so they've always, uh, usually it's a pair of them. Huh. Um, but you see on the draft, yeah, you know, the accounting that we do, 